I think it's safe to say that the prophet Jonah was a reluctant prophet. I want to give you, uh, remind you a little bit of the backstory of Jonah to the reading that you heard today. So you recall that God originally called Jonah to go to Nineveh and warn them that unless they repented, they were going to be destroyed. Now, for some reason, Jonah doesn't want to go there. And we don't know whether it was because it was a pagan city. It was a very wicked and depraved city. And maybe Jonah was resentful that God wasn't sending him to one of the cities of Israel. For whatever reason, he runs away. And he runs away not just to a neighboring country, he gets on a boat heading to Tarshish, which is 2,500 miles away from Nineveh. So Jonah was trying to get as far away from Nineveh as he possibly could. But God has other plans. You remember the, the boat gets caught up in a great storm. Uh, they're afraid that they're going to go under. They're throwing everything overboard to, to lighten the boat. And they finally figure out, the crew and the passengers, that Jonah is the problem that God is mad at Jonah, he's, he's gonna take Jonah down and all the rest of them with him. So they throw Jonah overboard and uh, get swallowed up by a great whale. He spends three days and three nights in the whale's belly. And when he's down there, he repents of running away from God. He tells God he's sorry. And then after that period of time, the whale vomits him up. And where did the whale vomit him up? On the shores of Nineveh. <laughs> right back where he started. So sometimes God's plans, um, you can't really thwart them. You can try to avoid them. They're going to get to you eventually. But, you know, if you, if you think about it for a minute, if Jonah had um, been successful in escaping God, he would have been very quickly forgotten that he ever existed on earth. But more than that, all those thousands of people in that great city would have been destroyed if it hadn't been for him. And so he gets to go down in history as God's most effective prophet. And the theme of the reading that I want to uh, talk about today, and it's in the gospel as well, is God has big plans for us, for each one of us. If we run away from God's plan, we're going to miss out on something that could be very, very big, something we never would have thought of. Because left to our own devices, and I think you'll agree with me that when we think about our own lives, we don't really plan to do anything very great. We just want to, you know, make it one step at a time, one day at a time. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but the question is, are we going to be attentive to what God might have in store for us? Are we listening to see if he might have other plans? something that might give us a greater impact on the world than we ever could imagine. There's only one condition, and this is a tough one, that we have to decide that we're not going to be the center of our own life story, that we're not going to be the one to plan it out, be the producer, the director, the screenwriter, have all the best lines because our life is not about us. And that's the fundamental switch, I think, that we're being challenged to make in the readings today. Is your life gonna be about you and your story and your drama? Or is your life gonna be about what God wants to do with you? Two very different situations. Think about Mary for a moment. 
Mary, who is this unknown Jewish teenager who receives this incredible invitation to be the mother of God. And she has no idea how this could possibly happen. How can it happen to me? I'm not known, man. And so the angel gives her this explanation about the Holy Spirit and being overshadowed. And I'll bet she was just as much in the dark after that explanation as she had been before. But nevertheless, she makes that fundamental switch and realizes her life is going to be something more than just her own needs and wants and her own purposes and goals which are always going to be narrower, more limited than God's plan, than God's goals for us. And so let it be done to me according to your word. That fiat changed salvation history. Now I'm not saying we're all called to be Jonah or Mary or the apostles in the gospel. But God does have a plan for us. Well, let's consider the gospel for a moment. Here we have Jesus walking along the, the shore of the Sea of Galilee. He comes across these fishermen. And Peter and Andrew recalls them. They drop what they're doing and join him. And now further down the beach are James and John. And they come with him too and they leave poor Zebedee. I always feel a little sorry for Zebedee sitting there in the boot, on the, on the boat forlornly watching his sons walk off with Jesus. But they knew they were called to something bigger. They weren't going to spend their rest of their lives as fishermen on the Sea of Galilee. Nothing wrong with that. But look at what they achieved by following Jesus. Think of all the thousands and thousands of people that were drawn to become Christians because of these men. These four men who left to themselves would have been forgotten as fishermen living in this insignificant part of a very unimportant country. No one would remember who they were after they died. And now we know them as four of the greatest saints that the church has ever had. So if we can use the, the fishing boat metaphor for a moment. They and we could have the option of just staying very close to shore when we go out fishing. Or we can jump out away to shore if the winds get high, where there's no real danger to us, where it's all going to be very predictable. Or we could push out into the deep, where the water's deeper, where the danger is more. We could have run into serious storms. We could be swamped. We could even drown. So there's risk in going after that, the deep waters, going after that idea that God has put into our minds of something we might accomplish. There's risk for sure. But on the other hand, God is in the boat with us just as Jesus was in the boat with his apostles. Now maybe you already have had some intimations that there might be something more in store for you. You might want to use your gifts a different way. You might want to embark in a different career. You might want, it might, this might be the time to commit to a relationship, to have a child, to make some change in your life that's going to change everything. And it's risky. You don't know how it's going to turn out. But maybe you have a sense that God is calling you to give your fiat to what he wants. Could it be? Maybe you're nervous. Maybe you want to run away like Jonah. God, just leave me alone. I didn't ask for this. But he's got great plans for all of us. And the question is, can we, go by, get, can we get past those 
thoughts that limit us. I'm not smart enough. I'm not old enough. I'm too old. I don't have the right gifts. Choose that other person. He's got the gifts you need, God, not me. And God, probably you made a mistake here. I'm not the one. We all have those ideas. And somehow we've got to be able to put that aside. This whole thing about I get to plan my own life and live my own life and don't let anybody bother me and push out into the deep. And I wonder what great mission we could go on. I wonder what great things we could accomplish if we should say to God, let it be done to me according to your word.